that often, and this has been my experience, things are presented, and I make reference specifically to the Auditor General's report. The nature of the report, the way it is structured, the way it, we are accustomed to having it um, presented, is that it is quite factual. And so it does not allow too much for nuance. It does not allow too much for one to be able to say, well, this wasn't in column seven, but it was actually in column eight. It, it doesn't allow for that. The responsible thing to do, I believe, would be to report beyond the facts, would be to say, we have found this discrepancy on the left. And when we consult with the agency on the right, we realize that the reason for this discrepancy is so and so. And for a long time, we've been saying, and I, and I can't speak to how it has worked in the last year on the inside of the government machinery, but for some time, we have said, if there are some discrepancies that are accounting issues, let us understand why. Let us understand whether this thing really was in column eight. It should have been in column seven, but you know, for goodness sake, that it was in column eight. Can you reflect that in the report? And so there's some of that happening. And I, and I, and I say that um, understanding that the, the Auditor General's report is structured in a particular way, and that individual has a duty to present what he has found. One of the things that we have to be able to work with the Ministry of Economic Affairs and others to do is to explain what is behind the numbers. Now, people can believe it or not, but we are saying these are what the numbers say and this is why. And often, you have to add that value to, this, to, to, to numbers. You have to add that value to what is going on in the ledgers because it can look like nefarious activity when it is not. It could be nefarious activity but it could also look like nefarious activity when it is not. And so I think that the Auditor General's report has to now evolve to the point where there is some explanation. I, I can't say on whose shoulders that would lie, arguably not the Auditor General's, but somebody's, to be able to add value to what is behind these numbers. But I also wonder how long we are going to say, well, we just have bad accounting practices. It is unfortunate that one would let accounting practices or an absence of action to bring things right cause the people of Barbados to doubt the intent and the level of responsibility and care that this government applies to its business on behalf of the people of Barbados. Put simply, what I'm trying to say is, this government has done too much, too well, to continue to lean on the crutch of quote unquote, poor accounting practices. We undermine ourselves when we do not simply face the matter and fix it. How long are we going to talk about cash versus accrual? And I beg the honorable member for Christchurch Essential that if I am wrong and if I'm out of date because of my current position, to bring me up to speed. But I say that honestly from a place of disappointment because this government has been able to achieve both here domestically and globally so much. We cannot continue to allow an Auditor General's report that is constrained in its structure to report things in a particular way to cast doubt on the good intent and the honest work of, of, of this government. A government that has, that has done far more, I dare say, than any other to be able to practice and demonstrate fiscal responsibility 
after one that had no association with the idea. It is time to be able to put this behind us and to say we are putting the resources. I'm sure the honorable member could go to the same CAF to get the technical assistance and to get the expertise. We are putting the resources into fixing whatever is stopping us from being able to truly represent what the government of Barbados is doing. All the innovation, the fact that we're being able to crowd in more private finance to do the things that are going to benefit people and give them jobs like the ones at Sam Lords. Let us deal with this situation once and for all. I find it personally and professionally frustrating because the same people with whom we sit around these tables globally are seeing those reports. They're not knowing, they, they, they don't understand or they might not read between the lines to understand that it wasn't column eight when it was supposed to be in column seven. Let us do the work to make sure that we are not just doing the right things as we are, but we are seen to be and proven to be doing the right things in the way that they need to be done. With those words, so, sir, I support this resolution and I thank you for indulging me.